Jukes Towers of Hell is one of the very few games on Roblox that tests your skills, knowledge of physics, your reflexes, and muscle memory on this platform. This game has a lot of content for players to do, with over 150 towers, past events that you can play, tower rushes, secret badges, and endings, and even then, there is still more content. If you're able to beat every single tower, there are still things for you to do once you're done. However, this wasn't always the case. The over 150 towers that people are able to play were not always there. In fact, the ring slot that you are transported to every time you open up the game did not exist. It was just one simple area with only a few towers. At its peak, before the rings, there were only five towers to play. The view on things in the community was drastically different than it is now, where just the simple concept of these obbies from hell raised eyebrows inside of this community. Let's go ahead and dive back in time and talk about Juke's Towers of Hell before the rings. Let me first give you some context before we get into anything else here. First of all, the time period we are talking about is July 2018, and the game wasn't owned by Juke at this time. It was owned by someone named Kitty Cannon, or by his way more popular name today, Oberyn Toon. You might know Oberyn as the co-owner for the popular Roblox game, Tower of Hell. So, I will be referring to the game as Kato, or Kitty's Towers of Hell during this video, as it was called back then, and not Jato. In around July 2018, the obby scene on Roblox was drastically different than it is now. There were really no such things back then as an obbyist, or communities for obbies. There were really only two sorts of obbies back during this time period. You had the everyday types of obbies that most people played, like ESCAPE THE DENTIST OBBY! Or, you had Roblox Ninja Obbies. These obbies were extremely different. These had moving parts and complex jumps. Instead of a checkpoint after every obstacle, if you fell the course once, you lost. Even though it was split into four stages. There are only very few of these games, and most people were unable to play them, as these were way more difficult than they were used to. Not to mention the types of skills as well. Roblox Ninja community members first spotted the game in very early August, where then other Roblox Ninja community members took on the challenge. What challenge you may be asking? Kitty's Tower of Hell. The concept was simple. You had a tower that was 100 by 1000 by 100 in dimensions and there were no checkpoints. Where you fell was where you landed. A concept that people don't deem creative at all today, and just considered to be everyday life in this Roblox obby community. However, that is not how things were seen then. Back then, there was only one tower, the Tower of Hell. Players were welcomed into this spawn area and assigned explaining what to do. There was also this relaxation area in the bottom, where players filled with rage sat down and relaxed looking at the cats for the immense difficult obby that they were playing. However, this tower which might seem like a cakewalk today, was drastically different back then. This tower was pure hell. Most people who played or attempted the tower had no form of consistency with their skill. For the first time, Robloxians were challenged on how long they could do precise jumps without messing up. But, as we all know in Tower of Heck, that wasn't always the case. There are objects like swings, conveyors, invisible platforms, and falling platforms to try and troll the player with no warning. Even back in these days, these objects were server sighted, so sometimes on floor 5, you would have fun for a couple minutes. There was no practice, and back in the early days videos did not exist, meaning every player had to sight read each jump and learn the tricks and trolls themselves in order to get anywhere on the tower. Anyone who was seen on the winner's team was praised for their immense skill and frustration they went through. And even the win room looked different than the ring one room of today. Having the credit to say you are in this win room is extremely rare. 
even more so than TOGF or Tower Windroom Sightseers. This whole concept was seen as extremely creative back then. The concepts of platforms that swung and fell below you were never seen before and got people raising eyebrows. Even the outside sections had players going, well that's very creative, but god that is very evil! This was also the first obby on the platform that had kill bricks that only slowly took your health away, instead of instantly killing you. Which led into more interesting gameplay mechanics throughout the tower. For a short period of time though, health regeneration was glitched and you couldn't heal at all, so it was even a bigger challenge for about a week or so. Slowly, but surely, this tower was being grinded out and more people were able to defeat it. People were wanting more of this very new and creative style, and Kitty was able to give everybody a chance for more content. Kitty announced that if the game received 7,000 visits, that Tower of Hell would get its sequel. With the insane growth of the game, it didn't take very long for this to be reached. Once this goal was made, people were thinking it'd be a brand new game with a different tower. It only took a couple days for people to tell that this would not be the case. Tower of Screen Punching would be released as the game's second tower. When Tower of Screen Punching was released, the game's potential would be revealed. Instead of multiple different games, with each having a tower like many people thought, there would be one single game in area to host all of them. People spawned in the same spawn plate that TOH had and went into this very simple looking lobby. There is also the same relaxation area from TOH with the cats. Here, there is also a photo gallery, if you even want to call it that. And here you go. This is what the original difficulty chart was like, if you even want to call it that. The way it worked was that the portal colors told you how hard a tower was, and it was simple as that. However, people with a keen eye quickly realized something with the new tower. There was only 9 floors. There are multiple different stories out there as to the reason why there are 9 floors, but the real story is a little bit underwhelming. It was just that Kitty didn't count the floors right, and hence TOSP has 9 floors and is the same as it is today. At first, many people in the community were confused as to how this tower was seen harder than Tower of Hell, but the community shortly got their answer in the form of Floor 7. Back then, these conveyors were a huge roadblock and had many community members stuck here which finally got people to understand why this was considered harder. But some people were able to go further. When people got to floor 9, the jig was up. The, the horrible thin stud rats were discovered and sealed the deal that TOSP was way harder than its Tower of Hell counterpart. However, not many people knew that there was actually this nice skip here to go ahead that you can do that would actually go ahead and get rid of most of the difficulty. then if you had the TOSP badge in your inventory, you were an obby god. Tower of Screen Punching was a success. Even though it was harder than Tower of Hell, and even then most people couldn't beat that tower, it got many people who were able to beat TOH to have an extra challenge, and the very small fanbase was hyped to see what was to come as all the content would be in this one small game. Tower Screen Punching would go ahead and give the community its foundation, as many people went ahead and joined the community to hear about the game's development. Sadly, the old Kato Discord has since been deleted, so future polls I will talk about and pictures of the very old community are sadly gone. There are very few pictures of the old Discord server. They're impossible to find and I don't have any. Now you might be asking, with only two towers in the game that barely anybody could play or get anywhere on, how did people keep their interest with the game? What was the community like? How many people even played it? Well, Kitty's Tower of Hell as it was being called back then was not a game people played full time like they do nowadays. It was a game you went to when you were bored and wanted something to do. People who came into this game were usually royal followers and new players were few and far between. No one thought these towers were terrible and no one really classified towers as good or bad. It was the concept and difficulty that people flocked for, not enjoyability. People who were coming into the game did not have the goal in mind to beat a tower, but to see how far they could get. A massive change in the mindset that we have today. The community itself was very small, 
it was a very unserious but serious community at the same time. People joked around and shared memes and had a good time. And everyone pretty much knew each other. However, as soon as there was toxicity, Kitty instantly abolished it and was extremely strict with that around. The community often came together and played other games than Kato, and was a very united and friendly community that me and my old friends hung out with a lot back in the old days. But while this community was being all kind and chilling, a milestone was coming. You see, Open promised that if the game hit 25,000 visits, a third tower would be made. And it was already here. The third tower would poke its head up and the milestone was coming way quicker than Kitty expected. For the very first time, the community had to say on the game itself. Kitty gave the community a choice between two names, Tower of Impossible Expectations and another name, which has sadly gone to time. A week prior, the game had a brand new difficulty above the black Good Luck Buddy confirmed. It would be purple and called Eggplant. This would change into the pink remorse list that we know today. At this point in time, you would also think the community was wishing for an easier tower to be added, but that was not the case. The community was voting with an overwhelming majority for the brand new tower to be Eggplant difficulty and Kitty pitched in. He said that the Eggplant difficulty was pretty much impossible and gave the community a chance to rethink their decisions. He promised though, if it got 100 votes, he would build the new tower to be Eggplant difficulty. However, this goal was not met, getting around 80 votes. And the next biggest majority, Good Luck Buddy, was voted on, making it become the new difficulty for the tower. Once again, the tower would be swiftly worked on and was released to the public very quickly. With this, we have the pre-ring lobby that is known today. This lobby is actually the lobby that Forgotten Ridge is being based off of and is the lobby that most people are familiar with from this time period. Upon entering, you have the same old sign, as well as the current admins that are in the game. You also have the same relaxation area and photo gallery from last time, but the lobby has some new decor, and there's also these new swinging boys on the outside here, and the oof counter was also introduced. However, there is also this hidden and secret obby down here. Making it to the end would put you into this room with this mysterious portal. We will talk more about this mysterious portal in part 2. The wind room was also updated into this brown and uh, yellow box with the same message as before. However, TOIE itself was pure hell. It was way more difficult than tower screen punching and many people instantly resetted playing it but it was what the community signed up for. Kitty thought that this tower was 100% impossible and never would be beaten, and not many people would even touch it. But this mindset of impossibility would immediately be debunked. It Nice, or It Near as he's known today, was able to speedrun the brand new tower with audio visualizer and got a time of 500 seconds. There were no tower timers, so the timer in the leaderboard was used to determine times and speedruns, meaning every time you missed up, you had to rejoin the game. People were beginning to realize the insane potential in this community in their skills, and dreams were getting bigger and bigger. Very few played TOIE, and people mainly used It Nice's video to see the tower itself. This achievement was considered to be the best achievement for obbies on the entire platform. No one really knew much information about what parts were hard or not, as most people couldn't even get to 4-3. It mainly just sat in the game with people coming in, playing for 3 minutes, and going to Tower of Hell. But even if this is all what people were doing in the game, it was raising the visit counter. Inside the lobby, you can see the visit milestones Kitty was looking for in order for the next towers to be added, and before he knew it, that was coming very soon. Fifty thousand visits was reached and Kitty went back to the community to ask for what they wanted. There were two questions. Should one, two, or three towers be added, and what difficulty for them? It would finally be time that people asked for something easier. Two towers won by a massive landslide and easy and medium difficulties were chosen. Tower of Anger and Madness was born. 
But while these towers were in development, the community had been pushing for a while for them to be able to create towers and be able to get them in the game. That time would finally come during TOA and TOM's development. Kato Kit 1.0 was released to the public, and people were finally making towers. The main reason why this was delayed so much was because Kitty did not want people using this kit for their terrible games, which as we know today, did not hold up very well. Upon release, the game got so many visits that the plaques were switched to 60,000 visits instead of 50,000. Also, the lobby got some new decor updates, and the spawn was changed, and the game was changed from Kitty's Tower of Hell to Kitty's Towers of Hell. The photo gallery got a massive upgrade, and now there was some new fan art section of Kitty's old avatar, with also some Tower of Hell culture and some more group photos. The fan-made towers that were planned were also put in here, and as you can see, there was planned for quite a bit of expansion. Also, for all of you fans out there, Slammo was introduced in this update! Finally, players had a chance to be able to do something in the game. People were quickly beating the new towers, and for the first time, People were constantly coming back for harder towers, as the new players as well were able to come in and get places. And the mentality shifted from getting as far as they can onto trying to beat towers. However, Kitty knows that performance in the game was going to go downhill with all the new towers being introduced. So the concept of the game changed. The ring select was being worked on, and many didn't know much about it. A tower whitelist was added, where towers that were confirmed for the game were shown up there. Finally, on September 17th, 2018, the ring select was released with the nine rings and many brand new towers, ending the era of the game before the rings. Even though at its peak there were only five towers to choose from, people flocked to the game for the new concept of tower obbies and got frustrated from the difficult and creative ways these contraptions made them fall. With the ring update, Came brand new type of hell and punishment for people to endure, as well as shifted the game into a very long term direction. Two and a half years later, the game's final ring is finally being worked on, and a massive chapter of history is bound to close. This is where it all began, before the rings. If you want to play this old era of Kato yourself, you can do so in the Kato Nostalgia Zone to see this for yourself. I'll have a link in the description below for you guys to look at. Thank you very much for watching. In part 2, I'll talk about rings 1 through 3. See you all later.